A day for shame. Thoman Park, July 13th, 2010. Sunderland AFC versus Monster 11. Lots of other fun events taking place on the day. Please come out and support the day for Shane Gagan here in Thoman Park on the 13th of July. Tickets are on sale now for what, what is a very worthwhile cause. Support a day for Shane. Get your tickets for the Sunderland game. A day for Shane. Tickets on sale now. Welcome to a special edition of Apple Bites, sponsored by Limerick Post TV. The training I did beforehand didn't prepare me in any way for what happened out there. Hello Sean, thanks for talking to us today. What's life been like for you Sean since you returned? It's been great. The greatest thing really is uh, being back home, uh, back home with my family and home with, uh, with the people of Limerick. Uh, you know, they ground you and they let you know, don't let you get your head too big. So it's really fun to be home. Um, I've been eating a lot since I got back. I, I finished my race, I went out at 14 and a quarter stone, came back at just under 10. So I've really been eating and drinking quite a bit since I got back and it's a great place to do it is Limerick. What's been the hardest part of training leading up to the race? Prior to the event, the hardest bit probably was the 24-hour non-stop uh, row. But it, you know, it, it sounds a lot now. But uh, at the time, it sounded like a lot. But right now, it, it's very little. It, the training I did beforehand didn't prepare me in any way for what happened out there. 24-hour uh, spin in a row machine is nothing. Uh, it would have been much better if you could put a 24-hour spin in a row machine inside a sauna on top of. Uh, a, a roller coaster that might get you closer but the, the training I did really didn't prepare me at all unfortunately. Can you tell us what was going through your mind when you were thrown from the boat? Am I allowed curse? <laughs> um, yeah I suppose when it happens you kind of hit autopilot. A little bit of the training I did beforehand to be fair was uh, a lot of the sea survival and, and doing stuff with SAS and special forces guys so it's amazing how some of that sticks in your head when it actually does happen. Um, it was a, a lovely morning, uh, well it was big waves but it was a lovely type of morning. Ship had just gone by and the wave hit me from the side. I just heard the fizz and the wave took me out. And as soon as I was taken out all I could think of is I had a strap on my, on my leg and I could think it was that strap holding. Um, and the boat tests went down the wave and I stayed behind so I got dragged through the wave and I could feel the strap coming off. So during that time, it, was, it wasn't panic, it was just, I had an oar in my hand and I was thinking, keep the oar, um, and I was trying to think of how I was going to get back in, I had my eyes open. Um, as soon as I got through the wave, uh, I was able to get to the boat, I looked down and the oar I had was only half an oar, so I threw that away and got back into the boat. Uh, I was in the boat for about 10 minutes getting things ready before I was able to sit down and relax. Then I started to reflect and uh, a little bit of panic to say the least set in. Um, it was later that evening, I suppose, really when it fully hit me, when I was calling my wife at home. Um, and then that's, that's really when something like that hits you. But you have to shake, your, shake it off and get on with it. And, you know, you're up, you're, you're on for the rest of the day. You're up rowing again um, the next morning. So you just get over and get on with it. Were you fortunate to come across any whales, dolphins or any other sea life? Whales, dolphins, sharks, leatherback turtles. I saw a huge amount of wildlife. Um, probably... The most impressive are the whales, uh, especially when they go underneath the boat. It's like watching two trains in a railway station. One train moves and you're not sure which one moves, so you lose all spatial reality. And that's what happens when a whale goes underneath your boat. You don't know what's moving, is it the boat or the whale? And all I could think of the first time it happened was, I hope he doesn't come up. <laughs> if he came up, I was going over. So you start, you start worrying about that. Uh, outside of that, pilot whales, they circle the boat and get closer and closer and they eat, uh, the, the, I had these big dorado fish underneath it. Uh, sharks are very sneaky. You don't see them until they feed, and when you do, it's extremely violent for a small, small bit of time. And the leatherback turtles, uh, my first experience of one of them was an interesting one. It was 4.30 in the morning, it was dark, I was asleep, and I heard this, like an old man kind of <gasps> sound, and picking at the side of the boat, and I didn't know what it was, and I went out, and it's actually the leatherback turtle, when he takes his head out of the water for the fresh air, it's, it's this old <gasps> So at half four in the morning, went your little headlamp on, looking for something that's making a noise in big seas, it was a bit, uh, a bit, a bit scary at the time, but looking back at it, it was funny. The moment when you saw land for the first time, what was that like? Um, 
I didn't see land until about six hours before I actually got to it. I should have seen it two days out, but it was covered in cloud. So I was rowing at night. I rowed the last 36 hours straight. Uh, I, I really, mostly the big reason was to get in during daytime because it was safer, but also the, the Munster Rugby match was on, so I wanted to make some of that. Um, I could have taken a seat, but I decided I'd keep going, which was a mistake because they didn't even have it on the island. But uh, I, I did turn around. It was about uh, three in the morning when I turned around and saw land for the first time, and it was really, it was just a brilliant set of lights and flashing lights. Um, and I thought I'd be delighted, but my first thought was, where's the coast, where are the rocks, how am I going to get in safely? And that was, that's really what I started thinking, because when you meet land, uh, it's dangerous. It, you know, especially I was in quite a wind, um, and my, my concern was that I had to keep my course and get in safely. Uh, and that was the first thought of land. But as I got close and I got safe, then it was a completely different set of, set of thoughts in my head. And finally, Sean, would you like to thank anyone? Oh, the amount of people I could thank, it's, it's, it's endless really. I suppose my wife and, and particularly and my kids, uh, my brother uh, Tom and my sisters Bridget and Donna who came out, my parents for sticking with it as well. And, but really there's a huge amount of people, Mark O'Connell, BDO, um, I, I'm going to leave people out so I better stop there. But a huge amount of people in Limerick uh, helped me and I'm delighted with that. Uh, I'm very proud to be a Limerick man and it was great to get so much support from Limerick prior to, during and after the event. But I suppose I want to just mention all the people who did send me texts and emails. The highlight of my day was at 11 o'clock each day. It mightn't sound much, but sitting down and having an a army ration pack of soup and uh, reading text messages from people who I didn't know, wishing me the best, you know, uh, family mottos, cracking jokes. It was, it was a huge thing for me. And uh, if I could thank those people particularly, that, that was a huge help for me. A day for shame. Thoman Park, July 13th, 2010. Sunderland AFC vs Monster 11. Lots of other fun events taking place on the day. Please come out and support a day for Shane Gagan here in Thoman Park on the 13th of July. Tickets are on sale now for what, what is a very worthwhile cause. Support a day for Shane. Get your tickets for the Sunderland game. A day for shame. Tickets on sale now.